Hey guys, welcome to Project Homestead. Today we're doing pumpkin pie cinnamon rolls. Actually, that's not really pie. I'm not gonna call them that because there's no pie filling in it. So we'll call them pumpkin spice cinnamon rolls. Something pumpkin, I don't know. I'm so excited to try this. I'm so excited to try this out because I think it's gonna be delicious. So let's do it. I, woo, just spilled that water. We're gonna be doing so many pumpkin recipes and I'm so excited and I wanna bring you guys along for the journey. I'm feeling, ooh. Sorry. I am feeling so excited about just all the pumpkin stuff. It's been kind of cool here in Western Australia and usually by this time, by Halloween, it is like stinking hot. It does not feel festive. Like, you know, I grew up in America, so of course by Halloween, it's usually freezing, right? And so when it starts getting like really hot, you just don't feel like baking and you don't feel like doing all that stuff. And so uh, over the years, I haven't done a lot of it, but uh, I don't know, it, it's a, probably a combination of my age as well. Coco, I'm trying to film. She got her collar off and now she's killing it. Um, but it's been a bit cooler and I think it's a combination of the cooler weather and me getting older. I just really want to like, dive deep back into my traditions of, you know, growing up and to just, and to enjoy them with my family, you know? So we are gonna be doing a lot of pumpkin stuff is my point. We're actually doing very soon a week of pumpkin. I'm gonna see if I can get a whole week out of this pumpkin, but we will see. I actually didn't, I need to watch that. We'll see. I might be able to do it. I might not be able to do it. I don't know. But today, this video is cinnamon rolls. So let's get to it. So I have been making a lot of cinnamon rolls. <laughs> My family might be a little bit annoyed of cinnamon rolls because I've been making a lot of them. But I think I've got the perfect recipe. So to the kitchen we go. We need flour. We need pumpkin and we need sour cream. Sugar. We need sugar. We need sugar. We need milk. Mmm, milk. This is our milk. We need butter. Can you grab the butter out, please? Yeah, I'm gonna dry my hands because I'm really wet. I need. I need some black strap molasses, but if you see my pantry, you will understand why I'm horrified. Just trying not to find. Oh, there it is. Oh no, it's leaked. Uh-oh. It leaked. The black strap leaked. Butter. Butter. What else do we need? An <laughs> egg, please. One egg? Do we need just one? We need that egg, Macy. And we need cinnamon. Gonna put the egg back. Cinnamon. I have an idea that's really genius, I think. I don't know about you guys in the States, but I found this at Costco. It's like pure ginger juice, and I'm going to use it in my frosting, and I think it's going to be divine. So, let's get going. Are you my helper? Yeah. I got a little helper! All right, first of all, we need to warm up some water. Lisey, please warm up um, one cup of water, please. Here you go. Where it is? So she's gonna pour a cup of water. You pour, and I'll tell you when to stop. Pour, 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 pour. No. Stop. Is that hot? Did I get hot or is it warm? Ooh, it's hot. Okay, well, I did it a little too much, so let's put a little cool water in there. You don't want to kill your yeast, right? So, what I'm going to do, to because you need to put the sour cream in there, the sour cream is only a tablespoon. Can you get the tablespoon? tablespoon? Yep, grab the tablespoon. Sour cream. Sour cream? I just, it's, it's nice. It's nice. If sour cream was a person? So a heaped they tablespoon. Sour cream. So to that, we're going to add our yeast, which is two teaspoons. Cranberries are so good. What? 
These cranberries are so good. Are they? Yeah. Nice. In we go. Mixy, mixy, mixy. So we've got, so we're mixing up our yeast, but we also need our sugar in there. So we need to have three tablespoons of sugar. Three tablespoons, that is one, that is two. This is a three a tablespoons, it's very nice. We're gonna mix that up in there. Nope, oh and our butter. We need a fourth of a cup of butter. I'm guessing this is about a fourth of a cup, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna warm it up and then we're gonna put a fourth of a cup of butter into our... And I have a third of a cup. Yeast, so I'm gonna put that in there. I'm just gonna warm it up really quickly and then open it. We'll let this kind of just sit aside for a minute and get all activated. Next, we're going to get a bowl. Knock up this. Do this bowl. Can you put that away? Thank you. Ooh. Ooh, I thought I was gonna fall. Also, we want, also, I totally forgot, but we wanna get this pumpkin all cooked up. So we're gonna pop it in the oven. Uh, I'm gonna do 200 degrees Celsius, so whatever that is Fahrenheit. Just how, just gotta cook the pumpkin. I don't really, whatever, you, whatever degrees you wanna cook your pumpkin, you can do it. I'm just gonna lay it like this. I'm actually gonna lay it face up because I don't, I don't want it to get too liquidy. So we're just gonna put a little bit of avocado oil on the top and some cinnamon. Put that all on the top. And then this is gonna go in a 200 degree oven. So you want to put the pumpkin in now so while your dough is, you're making your dough and you're proofing your dough, is cooking. Next we need three cups of, of salt. I just said three cups of salt. No, we do not need three cups of salt. That would be disgusting. Three and a half cups of flour. One fourth cup. What, how many, how many one fourths do you need for three and a half cups? Fourteen. Yep, so we need fourteen of these one fourth cups in the bowl. Thank 14. You. It sounds like you're putting like so much into it, but it's only a small cup, so it's not actually that much. aside for now. Mom? Yeah? Ooh, that's getting all bubbly and gorgeous. I don't know if you can, let me show, let me show you. What? So, that's getting all nice and frothy and gorgeous. So we're gonna go ahead and crack in our egg with one hand, like a skilled, skilled baker we are. Actually, I've never done this before, so bear with me. Oh, what? And then we're gonna add in our fourth of a cup of butter. Now, now we're going to take our beautiful mixture and mix it all together. Macy, would you like to do the honors of mixing that? And then Macy's just going to mix it all together until it turns into like a nice, lovely dough. It's kind of like breaking apart. Is that okay? Yeah, we're going to need it. 
next. So when it gets to about this right here, we're gonna go ahead and plop it out and knead it. In here. All right, so we've got some flour here that we're going to put like that. I'm just gonna go ahead and dump out the flour, sorry, the dough, and then knead it. Do you know how to knead? Yeah, it's supposed to be like. Or do you need me to explain it to you? Need you to explain it. <laughs> so kneading is very simple. You're just gonna fold it over on itself and push it. Fold it over, push. 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 And get the flour in your hands, and then your hands will be nice and floured, and they won't be so doughy. Yep. Try to like when you're pushing. Try to like push with like this part of your hand, like this part of your hand. Yep. And then bring it back to you, and then fold it over, and then yep. This is going to be a lovely dough. Just kind of want to make sure everything's nice and incorporated. It's a bit sticky. It's a bit of a sticky dough, but that's okay. That is okay. It's supposed to be a little bit sticky. You see how that's a bit sticky? This is what you want. We will. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this olive oil. Uh, Avocado. avocado oil and put that on the bottom and then Macy's gonna pop the dough in. Bloop. Bloop. And then we're gonna avocado oil the top of it just to help it to not be, yeah. you know. You wanna rub that in? Rub it in. It's just gonna help it not dry out. Now we're just gonna clean up and then we are gonna come back and show you the next bit. We actually need to cover up this. Laundry's done. Can you cover up the um, bread? Go around that way. All right, let's get to the making the filling and the frosting. Macy's just gonna cover up the... Um, the dough. Yeah, the dough. All right, so for the filling, we're gonna need a cup of sugar. How many one-third cups do you need to make a cup? One-third? How many, yeah, how many of, if it's a one-third cup, how many do you need to make a cup? No. When you look at a thing and it's like one slash three, it's literally telling you the answer right there. To make one three. cup, yes, to make one cup, you need three of these. Because this is one third of a cup. So if this said one eight, how many would you need to make a cup? Eight. Eight. Okay, so Macy's gonna do a cup. This is a third cup, so she's gonna put in three. Put it all the way to the top. All right, so to, so to the sugar, we're going to be doing a tablespoon of black strap molasses. Maybe. It smells weird. Ew. Oh, sounded, ah. sounded gross. All right, this is, this is not working the way I wanted it to, but it's okay, we're gonna go with the flow. <laughs> Dumping, yep, dumping the black strap molasses. Ooh. Thank you very much. Mm, that's satisfying. Tis, tis, and tit. Now we're just gonna get all that goodness out because that's nutrition. Okay, now. We mix it. Wait. Yeah, we do. Now Macy's gonna go ahead and mix in the sugar and the black strap molasses. My sugar. Macy, do you know what you're actually making right now? What? You're actually making brown sugar. This is brown sugar. That's when you go to the store and buy brown sugar. It's black strap molasses and sugar. It's not sticking together, Mom. Yep, just give it a minute. Be patient. <gasps> it kind of does look like brown sugar. Yeah, it is. We're making our own brown sugar. Hamish, see? Oh, wait. I just came in here to get some water. Whoa. It looks like kinetic sand. It looks like brown sugar. It's got that moist kind of 
You know, it's very, very sugary. <laughs> so to this, like brown sugar, I would have been like, oh, this kind of looks like brown sugar. Huh? Can I try some of it? You want to eat the brown sugar? I want to try a little piece. Do you even know what brown sugar actually tastes like? Yep. That tastes like brown sugar to me. It is brown sugar. This isn't sticky. Okay, so to this, we're going to add our spices. We're going to be adding some nutmeg. Ooh, nutmeg. Half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Do an eighth of a cup of cinnamon. Cinnamon. We like the cinnamon, so we go pretty heavy on the cinnamon. Point and then last, we're going to do a color. teaspoon of ginger. Our filling is done. Really? Yep, we just got to mix it up. All right, our dough has risen. I was just listening to an audiobook while I was going around and cleaning the house. So let's move on to the next step. Which so as you can see, it has doubled in size and it's very, very soft. So, you get this dough. Look how beautifully stunning this dough is. It's just so lovely. It's a very pretty dough. It's a very nice dough and I'm very happy with it. I'm trying to make it more of a rectangle situation. I tried doing cinnamon rolls a little while ago and I stuck them in like little um, cupcake sheets and I thought I was a genius, but the it kind of really did not work out because it made the cinnamon roll, all the goodness from the inside, it kind of seeped out and just caramelized and like hardened around the cinnamon rolls which was good like like right after but then it started being not so nice the next day it was like eating the hardest rock candy ever okay so to this we're going to spread some butter i just had the butter when i did this here we go so i go ahead and i mash the butter so that it's soft we're going to spread this butter onto our beautiful cinnamon rolls and we want to try and get it all the way around now i've actually straight up melted the butter but i don't like the way that my cinnamon rolls turn out i do like if the butter's just softened and we're spreading it over the top so we want to be very generous spreading the butter over because it's very important I'm so happy with this recipe. Let me show you what this looks like really quickly. So it should look like this, and I wanna really emphasize to not melt the butter, to go ahead and just make it soft and spread it over. I don't know what it does to the texture of the roll, but it really, really affects the texture. So make sure that you have butter that you can spread and not melted butter. Next, we're going to take the filling that we made, the pumpkin spicy, delicious homemade brown sugar, sugar filling that we made and generously put it over the top. Now you want to make sure that you don't get any, um, I got a little bit there, but you want to make sure you're leaving this part um, not sugared because it won't, it won't roll as easy. But all the rest of it, you can get straight to the edges. Right, there we go. So you want to make sure, you're like I was saying, you leave this so that when you're rolling it over, it, it kind of it has a seal instead of having the sugar, because the sugar makes it kind of difficult to stick. So we've got our spiced homemade brown sugar on. So this is where I thought before and I tried to put some pumpkin puree. It didn't work out. I'm not giving up on that idea. But these cinnamon rolls that I came up with are really, really beautiful. And um, they don't need the pumpkin in the middle of it. But walnuts. I have found that a handful is more than enough. I'm just gonna move those around like that. And then to that, you wanna add some ground eggs. Just sprinkle them on the top, whatever you think, however you much you want. This is, this is Christmas, this is Thanksgiving, this is tradition, this is family, so just be generous. I just realized that the pan I need for these is has a freezer mill in it. 
So, we're going to attempt to use this guy right here, which should be interesting because it's a lot smaller than my other pen that I normally use. It's okay. It's okay. We'll just go with it. Try to keep this in as tight as you possibly can. Now, this dough will break. Sadly, I'm, it's a very soft dough, so it definitely will break. Keep that in mind. Just be gentle and just keep going with it. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. It is a very delicate dough, so just be patient. Sometimes we just need patience, right? And there we go. So that's what we're left with. Now we're going to go ahead and cut our salmon roll. I'm gonna cut it in the half, and then I'm gonna cut each piece in half and keep going until I've got equal pieces and then we'll fit it in there. Okay. We're gonna move this guy in the middle. <laughs> that was a little touch and go for a minute there. <laughs> I wasn't too sure if that was a good idea to move my cinnamon rolls. <gasps> it's okay, we're okay. We got it in there. Now, middle, just eyeball it. And then we cut each of those pieces in the middle. I've also tried this with pecans and it is equally as delicious with pecans as walnuts, but right now I have walnuts, so pecans or walnuts or a mix. Get crazy and mix them. You can do that. They're your cinnamon rolls. And then we're going to cut all those in half. Kind of thinking a really big fat cinnamon roll like that is exactly what we need. And let's butter our, t not tin, what is this? Glass baking dish. All the way up on the sides too. Like we want to, do not want our cinnamon rolls to be sticking because then we can't get them out and enjoy them, right? I'm wondering if this will work better because it's kind of deep dish. Hmm, maybe this was a happy little mistake. Happy little mistake. I can make this recipe even better because it's a deep dish. And then we can call these deep dish, soft deep dish pumpkin cinnamon rolls. Oh, I need them. We all need them in our life, right? So, now we're going to just take our salmon rolls, look, and we're gonna put them in there, and yeah, just kind of let them be in. Hopefully these all fit. I'm really hoping that they fit. I've never been able to roll a really tight cinnamon roll before. I don't know why. It's just not been something I've been able to do before. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and put the towel back over the top of these and let them rise again for another 30 minutes. And then we will be back to finish it all off with the frosting. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up. I have been looking for powdered sugar because I could have sworn I had some, but I did not. So one thing in the Thermomix that's really good is that I powder, can powder my own sugar, so I just powdered myself some sugar. It probably could be more fine. Let's let's blend this. Let's mail it a little bit more. Plug your ears. So you'll know it's done. When you open the lid and you get a little bit of this whole action right here. But you can also just fill it. It still is a bit gritty, if I'm being completely honest. Which is odd because the Thermomix usually is so good at getting it ground down. This is where you're going to get out the cinnamon roasted pumpkin. It smells divine. It smells really, really good. I did it upside this way because then it doesn't, it doesn't have as much liquid in it and it's not all watery and, but you can still cut into it and get that beautiful pumpkin goodness. Excuse me, I've got the hiccups. 
So let's make let's make our pumpkin frosting. All right. Just take out this powdered sugar. blender we're going to add in a whole entire cube block of cream cheese I used a tiny bit of this this morning on a salad I made my husband but it's okay two cream cheese frosting we're going to add in a heaping tablespoon of sour cream and this is where it gets so good I found this ginger juice at Costco and this really does make the difference. It elevates the whole entire frosting. We're going to do one, we're gonna do one tablespoon of, oops, wrong, almost like that in the sugar. One tablespoon of this ginger. Now, if you don't like ginger, do half. <sighs> to the recipe, I have um, two teaspoons of, sorry, three teaspoons of cinnamon, but I'm gonna be liberal here because I love me cinnamon. So this is kind of where you can play with the spices and whatnot. But I'm telling you that ginger juice, next level. Okay, so to that, we want to end it by adding um, um, a cup and a half of powdered sugar. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. This is a half a cup, so I'm gonna do three of these. And then we're going to add in a beautiful dollop. This is two tablespoons of the beautiful pumpkin. And you want to get that top bit, guys. Like, you want to get this stuff right here. You want to get that beautiful cinnamon baked on caramel, caramel goodness. Okay? I'm not going to do any butter because the pumpkin replaced the butter. And then we're just going to blend this up. So this frosting is not a very like thick and fluffy frosting. If you want that, this is not the frosting for you. This is more kind of like that cinnamon, like where you have the glaze and it goes over the top. It's like that, it's so yum. So we tested that because you can change, change it to your, you know, preferences. We should call these pumpkin pie cinnamon rolls. They're so good. I think it's so perfect. So I just want to show you guys with the flash on, the consistency of this frosting. It is so delicious. My son has been telling me, my son's been telling me he hates pumpkin, anything with pumpkin in it. So let's try, let's just tell, not tell him it has pumpkin and see what he says. Hey Mish, yeah. try this frosting and tell me what you think. Mmm. Is it good? It's got pumpkin in it. It's actually surprisingly good. Winning. It's actually really good, actually. Mm, I told you. you. Gotta have faith in me, buddy. Uh -uh. He's not feeling good today, so he's just doing Minecraft today. He's got a sore neck, so he's just doing Minecraft today. You wouldn't think I had just cleaned this, but I, have, I had just cleaned this. I have cleaned it twice. We've been doing YouTube all day long. <laughs> Multiple videos. And it's okay, because now... We're gonna have cinnamon rolls very soon. We are on our final steps. We're getting the kitchen cleaned up very slowly, but we're doing it. It's Halloween, so I gotta get going because we gotta get some trick or treating. You know what I mean? But I want to show you my cinnamon rolls. Where did they go? You can see here, my cinnamon rolls are very risen. And yeah. so, what I'm gonna do it might seem odd, but this I'm just gonna. Sprinkle like that. Just kind of make sure everything's kind of just not dry. Don't want it to start out dry in the oven. Yes. We're gonna put it in our oven, which we have preheated. We're gonna bake those for 30 minutes, and then we will let them cool, go trick or treating, and try these out maybe when we get home maybe in the morning but either way i'll be back what is it doing coconut what is it doing 
I only bought this Halloween costume for him like a month and a half ago and it fit him perfectly on his legs and now it's like high. <laughs> yeah. Something smells amazing. Back from from trick or treating. Hey Mish, show everybody how much candy you got. I got these and I got this. He made out pretty good. You pretty happy? I got a little tiny thing of jelly beans. I think the bake time on these cinnamon rolls really depends on your oven. Mine's really old, and so I ended up having to bake these about 40 minutes. I had to put some tinfoil over the top because they were starting to brown, and we had to go trick-or-treating. So I ended up putting tinfoil over the top and then putting them in for a total of about 40 minutes. To try and show you guys what I'm doing, I'm just drizzling on the cinnamon roll frosting. Like so. Oh, I'm getting it in there. All right, I scrapped the drizzle and I just went all in and I poured a ton of it on the top because it's just that delicious. And there they are in all their glory. They are just a big, huge holiday hug. Right now for the taste test, I've just taken one out. Here we go. I kind of pulled some of it off in there, but you can see it's still very soft. Ooh, it's hot. It's very, very soft dough. Let's see? Oh my gosh. This is Halloween. Mm. Come here, Hamish. I give Hamish a little piece. Try it. Honestly, it's pretty good. Like really good or a little good? Really good. You get like this little bite of tart with the cranberry. Mm. The cinnamon roll is so fluffy, and the walnuts they they toast up inside the oven. And you don't need to toast. You don't need to toast the walnuts and then put them in there to get that toasted roasted flavor it's just there i did it i came up with a really bomb pumpkiny fall beautiful recipe for cinnamon rolls mm. can you see it's just so moist the bread it's good let me know if you try it and let me know what you think of it that's pretty much the video i'm gonna wait for my husband sorry and then we'll let him try it. And then that will be it. That is my fall pumpkin-y pie cinnamon roll recipe. Mm. Yum. The husband finally came home. Hey, babe, come here. Like the flavors and give us a good review. And if you don't like it, tell me honestly if there's something you would change or that you would tweak or whatever. Okay. Does it matter that I'm not a big fan of pumpkin pie? What? Does it matter that I, that I don't like pumpkin pie? I thought you said you liked pumpkin pie today. No. Well. I don't not like it, but I don't like, I'm not like, oh, pumpkin pie. Yeah. Pretty good. Like, do you think it's like a recipe that you would feel happy sharing some, with somebody else when you're like, oh, I have a good recipe for, you know, like pumpkin, pumpkin desserts? Yeah. Would you eat another one, like, tomorrow? Yeah. That is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, bye.